Well, hello again. I was just uh, cleaning that mess up right there because if we look at our shock on the other side, if you'll remember, it was this rubber grommet area was half gone. Matter of fact, part of it was up inside this cup still. And the, uh, the bolt on the top, or the rod on the top of the shock that takes the nut was all bent over and mangled where it had been slammed up against the, the, the coil springs, I guess. And I wasn't really sure what that thing looked like. You know, I was looking around on the internet on uh, Max Thunderbird. It's the only place I can find grommets for this. They don't have any on uh, Rock Auto. And uh, I said, they had two different kinds of grommets there. And I said, well, I'm going to have to take the top off the other one and find out what it's supposed to be. So that's where we're at right now. I'm glad, I'm glad to have you back. Got a lot of good comments off the last one. And uh, what we have here is uh, on Rock's Auto, uh, Rock Auto's, uh, not Rock Auto, but uh, Max Thunderbird, they, they show two kinds of grommets side by side. One has a rounded top on it, and the other one, it looks like this. Now, of course, it's not painted white. That came about as a result of the paint job this guy did, but I thought the rounded one would fit up in here, and then this other one would fit down in the hole here. Now, this is a pretty thick grommet. Take a look at that baby softly. It's all one piece, believe it or not. Big old giant rubber grommet. It fits down in the hole right down in there where the shock comes up through. We're going to get new ones of these. Uh, I hope we're going to get uh, one for each side. <clears throat> and uh, But apparently that round one with the hump in the middle, I thought it maybe sat over the top of this one, you know. And then this one down on top. It may. I don't know if it does or not. It does show two of them in the shop manual. So, I don't know. Maybe the Maybe after we put this one down, the other one sits on top. And then this goes over the top and you squish the entire thing back down. And, you know, there's not much room in there. I don't know, maybe people just decided not to even bother with uh, <laughs> putting the second one on. I don't know why that would be like that. Kind of strange. But, you know, it does make sense in a way. I mean, they wouldn't have a nice round one with a curved top on, you know, if it didn't fit up inside this, like a round curved top. I don't know. I'll have to keep digging around to find out some information on that. You know, there's not a whole lot. of When you come right down to it, there is not a whole lot of information on Thunderbird refurbishment and repair on the Internet, on YouTube in particular. There's little segments and bits and pieces and parts, you know, just like there was with the jukebox we repaired. A little bit of this type, a little bit of that type. And, you know, with the differences in these classic cars, you just can't say, well, this will work with here and this will, you know, yeah, the basic procedure, for instance, of coil spring removal, uh, yeah, you squeeze it together with a, you know, a, a coil spring compression tool, but, uh, it, but, but it's different on each car and how you have to do it, you know. So one good thing about this series I'm hoping everyone gets, and particularly those who own the T-Birds, is you're getting the complete thing from beginning to end, step by step. And that's important uh, to get it to get this car uh, safe to drive. Now all the cosmetics, you know, the floorboard that needs to be replaced in, on the passenger side of the car, that's not a big deal. I mean, they, all floorboards are the same. It's just sheet metal. You cut them out. You put a new one in. They're all the same. I don't care what it is, truck, car, whatever. But things like this are a little bit different, you know. So I don't know. Right now, I see. I think maybe I'll have to buy. Uh, I'm, I may have to call up Max Thunderbird and ask him, but of course a lot of those guys may not know. Just because, just because they say, well, ask us a question. You know, you ask you a question. I don't know if you guys know anything at all. I've had that happen so many times, but we shall see. That's what we've got so far. And on the top of the shock, there is the uh, round, flat, large washer. And uh, when I go down, I'm going to buy my shocks from O'Reilly. I'm not going to buy them online. They're much too expensive online. And, I'm, and, and uh, I think, I don't know if I'm going to get this with it or not. I don't know. We shall see. That'll come after a while. Right now i got a lot of cleaning to do and uh, a lot more eyeballing to do before I decide to squeeze that coil spring together. And one more thing. Oh, one more thing. I want. <laughs> Speaking of coil springs, man, alive. You know, they don't make, uh, in particular, uh, Detroit Eaton Spring Company doesn't even make. Uh, springs, coil springs for the 66 Thunderbird. I just can't get over that, you know. And 
so I decided to look around. I said, well, maybe the 67 Thunderbird. Uh, you, you go to the website, uh, and I think it was, I uh, can't remember which one it was now. It seems to me it was the Bird Nest up in, uh, up in Oregon, another Thunderbird site. And it seems to me they had uh, the right, they gave you the ride height uh, for the front and the rear of the car. And they also offer coil springs. And the coil springs, I probably are made in China. I don't know. I sent them an email. We're going to find out. I haven't heard back from them yet. If I don't hear back from them, that'll probably mean, yeah, they're made in China and they don't want to let anybody know. <laughs> it's just the way it is, you know. I prefer not to have <coughs> coil springs. Now, they do claim, I think, on their website that the coil springs are made. Uh, to manufacturers original specifications. Well, that may be so, but what about the metal they use? You know, that's that's the problem I don't I don't like the metal that China uses in anything and I don't like the glue they use on anything in particular a pair of shoes Where the sole comes off all the time. I swear to this day all they use is flour and water for that Anyway, that's what's going on so far. Uh, it'll be a few days before I actually get a chance to work on this uh, car again I've got some things I have to do around the house. Uh, this weekend, a friend of mine and I, we're going to go up to a flea market that's about 20 miles away and enjoy that for the day. It'll be on a Saturday, so you know, that's what I'll be doing. I'm not going to kill myself on it. I got most of it done, but you know, as far as the coil spring removal, it's, it's not going to be that difficult. But I sure would like to know if a uh, 1967 coil spring would fit in this 1966 Thunderbird and give me the same ride or thereabouts at the same height. I can't find any information on it. I have hunted high and low on, on the, uh, I'm just trying to find a ride height for a 67 T-Bird. You can't, I don't know where it's at. It's nowhere that I can find it. I've looked and looked and looked. There are lots of specifications here, there, and everywhere, but not what we really need. This thing has eight coils on it. Now this is the kind of stuff that irritates me, slows you down. Now, you know, I have to have that shock mount off that shock. But you think that nut would come loose? No way. I have to call on Johnny Flame. So I'm just going to have to heat that baby real hot and hopefully it'll do the job. I know that rubber around that shock is going to be awfully smelly here in a few minutes. <laughs> Well, after I heated it, I was be able, able to take a uh, wire brush and really clean the threads and clean around the bottom of the bolt and everything. And right now I'm letting it soak in something called, uh, let me back up here a little bit, something called PB Blaster. PB Powerful Penetrate. I never heard of this stuff and I don't even know how it wound up in my garage. It's just there. <laughs> you know, I got some mysterious uh, character that drops off stuff in my garage every once in a while. I don't even know where it came from. Maybe he'll drop off a few buckets of money one of these nights. Maybe it's old, maybe it's old 64 goat coming down here dropping stuff off. I expect that bucket of money any day there, Bill. I did discover one other thing by taking the top off that other shock on the other side of the car. This metal flat washer here is not something I have to put on. It's embedded and it's part of the rubber mount. All in one piece, apparently. So that's kind of cool. Now, one of our good subscribers, uh, Vinyl79, he's been asking whether or not I'm going to change the upper and lower ball joints. Now, this is the upper. The lower is down below behind this thing right here. It's the same thing. It's attached to this lower control arm. This is, in fact, I found out since the last video that this is the, considered the lower control arm, even though it's a lot smaller. And this is your upper control arm. It's kind of interesting. See where that thing, something's been rubbing against that right there. I don't know what they could have been. I don't know if it's a tire. I mean, the more I work on this front end, the more I'm becoming concerned, you know. Anyway, uh, in order to, once we compress the spring and get it out of there, we'll go ahead and remove the ball joints and uh, remove the spindle and its mounting uh, bracket, which is attached to the, uh, which is attached to the uh, ball joints. And then this arm down here will have to be removed from the tie rod end. Because when, when you turn the steering wheel, the tie rod end moves left and right like this. When you move the steering wheel left and right, and it makes this arm also move left and right. And when it moves left and right, it causes this thing here to go like this. Left and right. It's all just one big mechanical arm changing to another. And, and then it goes like that. Okay? Nothing to it. Yes, we will be changing those ball joints. I, I like doing that. It's kind of fun. However, however, when I said I get more concerned about this thing every day, notice... You know, notice that this thing right here, 
It's at an angle. It's at an angle, like this. I don't like that. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be or not. I'll know when I get to the other side of the car, because before, I, don't, I just don't know. Uh, I may have to jack up the other side of the car, take the tire off, and see what it looks like. Seems to me this thing should have been straight up and down, not at an angle. I don't know. You know, like I said, I do believe this car has been in an accident at one time. It was on the uh, passenger side, and I don't see anything mangled over here of any significance. So, I don't know. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. I've never seen a ball joint. Now, I do have the wheel hanging all the way down. You know, but even so, I'm not sure that's still supposed to be at an angle. But you never know. We'll find out. All right, a couple more days have gone by because of the rain. I have to have both of these garage doors open to give me enough light to work. Otherwise, it gets pretty dark in here, and it's tough on the camera, and it's tough on me. I don't want to have any problems. You know, I want to be able to see as much as possible, <clears throat> especially when you're dealing. I'm not getting underneath the car, but still, you know, I don't want the thing dropping down if possible. But if it, if it were to drop, it drops. You know, it's not the end of the world. Anyway, uh, today we are going to remove this coil spring. Yes, we are. And about the only thing I really need you to get out of this operation is that not all springs are made the same. Some springs, it's the, at the end of the spring where it's cut off down here in this particular case. Let me zoom in here. Right down in there is the end of that spring. And it's cut flat. Just, just like you took a pair of scissors and just cut it off. And you'll notice that there is a space between the coil, between uh, this one, let me see where my finger, between this one and the bottom coil. There's a space there, okay? Now, the top of the spring is different. The top of the spring does not have uh, that space, and it's not cut off flat on the end. It's not round either. It's not round. The, co the, the uh, coil's not round. It's not cut off like that. It is, but it's not round cut. And uh, it's, uh, there's no space between the, the, the coil next to it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me get in position here. Now, the last coil, or the one on the top up here, is actually flattened on the end. It's not round. It's been flattened. Let me zero in on that baby. Maybe you can see it a little better. So this, this spring right here is actually flat on the top. Come on, baby. Focus in here. There we go. It's actually flat all the way across. When I get the spring out, you'll be able to see that. In the back back there, you can see where it's flattened out to a... Almost a point on the end. See it back there? So it comes around, it's flat, and, and it's not, and it is touching, it is touching the coil next to it all the way around, all the way to its termination. Whereas this one's not anywhere like that. Let me back up here a little. This one here is totally different. So, you know, not all springs are the same. Now, some springs have flat top and bottom, some springs have, uh, you know, this kind of coil down here where it's just cut off the flat and there's a space between the bottom and on both ends. And then of course you have this kind here where it's flat on the top and it's open and uh, just cut off on the end down here. Keep that in mind, you know, sometimes a guy will say, well, I think this spring, you know, will fit a certain car. Well, you better go to a book and check and make sure that that spring is in fact the kind that'll work in your car because they won't mount right. You have to have a way to mount them on the bottom, and there is a way. There's a groove down there on this particular uh, control arm where the spring coil terminates in. It fits down into that groove. I'll show you that later. And then up here, of course, it has to be flat. If it was, if you had a coil spring like this on both ends, you wouldn't be able to fit it up there. It just wouldn't work. It would be. It just. It just wouldn't fit. It's got to be flat. I know I'm beating this to death. I just want you to understand that not all springs are created equal. Well, let's let's see what I can do now by getting this thing out of here. Now here's the uh, coil spring compressor I'm going to use, uh, and I have never used one like this, and I was kind of surprised the other day when I went down to O'Reilly and they popped this thing up on the, on the uh, counter. It's brand new. It hasn't even been used. It still had the uh, plastic tie around the handle, keeping the two halves together when it, you know, when it was closed. And I took a look at that thing. I said, <laughs> what kind of a spring compressor is that? You know, it's missing two hooks. It's supposed to be, you know, two hooks at the bottom like this at the bottom and there's supposed to be two here and two there where you know you you hook it on the coil springs and then you squeeze it together 
by turning, uh, you know, this thing here with a ratchet. <laughs> it's supposed to, but the, I said, half of it's missing. And they said, well, they, and they didn't know much about it either, to tell you the honest truth. You know, they, I, not, I don't expect those guys to know everything when you walk in there, but, you know, they know a lot. But sometimes you can run into something like this, and they said, well, I don't know either. Well, I kept thinking about it and kept thinking about it, and I, and I read this up here. It didn't really say much because it just shows another picture of the same thing. And it kind of puts a little bit of a description. So I was able to figure out how to use it. And I'm going to show you how that's done. Now on a coil spring like this, we do not clamp it from the outside. No, we do not. This is not a McPherson strut. Your McPherson struts have a, a spring compressor that fits on the outside on both sides. And then you, you, know, you tighten up each one individually. They just sort of hook over the spring there, hook over the spring there, and as you squeeze down the right, then you squeeze the one, you know, the uh, the one down on the left that's hooked over the springs. You go back and forth until you get the spring collapsed enough to where it kind of rattles around and you can get it out. I am not going to comp compress this spring. You do not compress a spring until the coils touch one another. You do not do that. You just get it to where it's loose where it'll rattle around, where you know it's no longer under tension. And then uh, you go ahead and lift it out with the compressor inside this coil. And that's what we're going to do. Now, the uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jack up down here. I'm going to jack up the spindle a little bit and try to get that spring to collapse a little bit for me. I'm not going to jack the whole car up with it. I'm just going to kind of collapse it a little bit, make it a little bit easier for me to finish the job. All right, that's good enough. I only jacked it up about two or three pumps, you know, just to help a little bit. I'm not going to collapse the entire spring, just a little bit. We just want to get it up and out of that uh, control arm because it's just sitting in there. All, there's nothing holding it in really right now besides the weight of the car and the bottom of the uh, and the bottom of the control arm. The next thing we have to do is get this baby in. Now, normally this is the way this spring compressor would go into the spring from the bottom of the spring upward. It goes up and it hooks on a couple of coils at the top and then once you get it hooked on then you take this little foot right here that has those impressions in it. See those little bumps there? Those little bumps are what holds the spring. It'll, it'll, the spring coil will go between this one or this one depending on where you position it. And on the bottom of this thing is a recessed area on the bottom of the foot where these washers fit. So they would go on like so. I'll put this like so. If I can get it in place here, hang on. Like this right here. So that's the way it would fit all the way in just like that. And the spring coils in the bottom would fit in these the raised humps. And then you would just simply take your ratchet from the bottom of the spring and tighten it slowly, slowly, slowly. You're not supposed to use an air impact wrench on this. They warn in the box in the instructions in there not to do that. You want to do it with a wrench and a, you know, a ratchet and a, a socket. You slowly do it, slowly collapse your spring. But unfortunately, we don't have a spring like that. We do not have... A hole at the bottom of the spring. All we have is where that bracket was. We have three screw holes. We have to go down from the top of the spring. So essentially what's going to happen is this thing is going to go in like this. It's going to go in just the opposite direction like so. Let me get this in here. There you go. So this is the way it's going to go for us. We're going to have our little hooks at the bottom catching the coils. And then this thing here will be at the top, and we will go down from the top with a ratchet and a socket and slowly turn it and turn it until it collapses the spring, enough to where we can clear it over the top of the edge of the uh, control arm and uh, this right here, the ball, top of the ball joint. This is going to have to come up quite a bit, so we're going to have to collapse it. Now keep in mind, that was one of the reasons I jacked it up also, was to give us a little more, little more edge. Uh, you know, so when we collapse the spring, we might be able to cock it to the left or right and get it to go up over the edge of this because this is lower than this right here. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see once we get it collapsed. So let me get the thing in position and uh, get a ratchet and a socket and see if we can't get this thing started. 
Well, that's about it. I've got uh, one hook on the bottom here and the other one on, on over there. You can see it over here in the back. And this foot is in here with that lip over the top of the coil. And the other ones are over the top over on the other side. Now, the only thing I'm not too crazy about is it's not exactly centered on this side in the spring. I'd like to have it a little more centered. So what we're going to do, it's not a big deal. We're going to take a little hammer here. Yeah, it's always a big hammer. When something doesn't work right, just get a big hammer. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of tap this around until I get it more. There we go. Now I'm a little bit happier, okay? I'd like it to have a little more in the center like that. And, of course, that one up there is where it's going to be because the foot is the one that determines the position on that. All right, I think we're ready to collapse. Let's get to the top. And there's the top of the bolt that we're going to be uh, uh, twisting. I'm going to go ahead and try to move the bolt to the lower part of the screen there. I want it more centered on that also before I start twisting. So I'll just take a little long screwdriver or something down there and put it up at the top and kind of wedge it a little bit over until we get it in the center of the foot. All right, all I'm going to do is take this, these, I have a couple of uh, ratchet extensions I just stuck together. I'm going to take it down there, put it to the top. There's a space up there, I don't know if you can see it, let me get over here. I just put it up there and now I'm just going to pull it toward me and hopefully that thing will move right into place, which it is. Okay, she's moved pretty much toward the center, just like that. I'm a lot happier now with that. All we do now is take our, I took a, uh, I used a deep socket on this, it's, it's a three quarter inch, okay? Goes right on there with a shorter extension. Now it's just a matter of tightening it up and collapsing that spring a little at a time. I'll take it around about maybe seven or eight turns. These are real fine threads on that, on that uh, thing that holds the hooks. I guess they call it the center hub or something. <laughs> anyway, we're just gonna slowly do it seven or eight, ten times maybe at the most. Then go down, check it, and see how we're doing. Keep compressing. It's kind of a long, slow, tedious process. Don't get in a hurry on this. You know, if you have to, if you absolutely have to, stop and go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> Makes the job a whole lot easier. Yes, it does. Anyway, we'll just do a few more turns, and then we'll go down and check it. It's beginning to feel a little tighter, okay? Maybe, I don't know, maybe I can just get the thing to fly out of the car, hit the wall, come back, hit me in the head, give me a concussion, and knock out a couple of windows. You never know, you know. Then I can stop for the day. Well, I can already see that we may be running into a problem. I may have to take this thing all loose again and reposition it, and I'll tell you why. See that rod in the center? It's getting down real close to the uh, control arm down there. See it? Yeah, I don't know how much further I can go. Maybe another... Not quite a half an inch, but that's okay, because we do have the spindle jacked up. So let me go ahead and lower it and see if that gives us any more clearance. Hopefully it will. And that'll loosen up. This spring is not even loose yet, and it should have been at least some place. So let's go ahead and lower it down and see what happens. Well, that gave us a little more clearance, about another, maybe another quarter inch, maybe a little bit more than that. We're not doing too bad. Let me get down in there. we got quite a bit of space here. Let's keep cranking and see if we can get this thing to at least come loose. She just doesn't want to move. She should have moved. I don't know. Maybe it's rusted together, huh? You know, there is so much crap down there. I can't even see really what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and take a can of air and blow out a lot of that stuff. Mud, mud wash, nests, and dirt, and... You name it, half the state of Arkansas, I guess. Well, she just won't come out from the bottom. And you know, if you've followed my videos, and no matter what it is I do, if something doesn't work one way, you think the opposite. So let's go to the top and see if we can't get it out. If it won't come out from the bottom, now the top is flat. This thing here is down into that gully. You, know, you can see the gully now a little better now that we've got the dirt out of the way. That bottom uh, coil is down into a sunk in spot. So the top being flat, we might be able to just wedge it out from the top and pull it out from the top this way. Which is probably the way it's supposed to be done anyway. It just doesn't say it. We'll see. Let's go to the top and see if we can take a screwdriver and move the spring over. 
Well, she moved a little bit. Let's see if we can get her to move a little bit more. All I did was reach up in there with the screwdriver and kind of go like that. I wanted it to move out toward me. Yeah. Oh, come on. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. You see that, people? Now, if, as long as that compressor holds, I guess we'll probably be in pretty good shape. It's going to have to come out. Let me work on it with both hands. We're making progress. Well, the old screwdriver has done about as much as it can do, so let's take the old uh, jack handle, see if we can get it out with the rest of that. By golly, I think we've just about got it. Let me go down below. Well, as you can see, she's just barely hanging on by one edge. I think we're about to claim success with this. I think I'll just try to take the hammer. I've got a claw hammer. I think maybe I can just kind of reach up over there with the claw and pull that baby straight out. Of course, it'll fall back down. I want to be careful of this spindle. I better cover up that spindle. I don't want that thing hitting that thing, screwing up those threads. All right, I've got our spindle covered up with a nice thick layer of towel. And I've got the uh, hammer claws hooked over the very top a coil. I got a pair of gloves on to protect my hands a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and pull that baby out of there, but first I'm going to get out of the way. And there it is. It is on the floor. <laughs> oh man, what a mess, what a mess. Now, a little word of precaution here. They claim that if you're going to keep the uh, spring compressor in the spring, you should store it in a cabinet somewhere or some kind of a box in case it all came loose and it went springing around, did all kind of weird, nasty stuff. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to remove, well, I have to. I have to remove that spring compressor because I have to take it back to uh, O'Reilly's and uh, pick up a ball joint remover. Once we get this baby down, this uh, spindle down, uh, out of here, then we're going to have to take out the, the, the control arm, clean all this mess up, and uh, take out the ball joint top and bottom on the lower control arm down here. You know, we've got quite a bit of work ahead of us, but you know, we're going to go slow on the first one. The second one always does go much, much faster because we, you know, we, you know, touchy feel our way al along. Now, uh, now, on the top and bottom of these springs, you have to, there's one more thing I want you to know. If you ever do order, springs you see that rubber thing right there and it's called an insulator there's one top and bottom that fit on the springs this one here has had the lick this thing is let me get this there we go this this one here is, is shot i can get a hook on it look at that it's, now it's only half there the rest of it's missing but uh and then that sunken spot i told you about where that coil spring fit that's it right there let me blow out some more of this dirt here That air is awfully expensive in that can. I couldn't find the regular size at Walmart, so I had to get the big one. Anyway, right there is that sunken spot. If I can, right there, see that sunken spot right there? Down in there, that's where that coil, the bottom coil fits. So you can't really put the spring in wrong. If you lay your spring in so the coil comes around, it, it butts up against this right here. It just lays right in that trough. That's what it is. All right, I think what I'm going to do, we'll go ahead and knock this video off here, and uh, I'll go ahead and remove the spring compressor, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to step on it with my feet, you know, and I'm going to put an extension down through there and just take the ratchet and loosen it up, and it'll slowly expand, and uh, we'll get ourselves a nice new set of coils. I just don't like those. I want a new set of coils on here. End of story, okay? And it's... Uh, I want this car to ride better than it has been. I want it to feel good when I steer it and go around corners. I want the car to be safe. This is a hobby car. It's not something that's good. You know, it's not a NASCAR. All right, we're going to take things nice and easy and slow and do it right. And the ones that have never done this before, I hope you're learning something. Until next time, hope you enjoyed it. This is John. One more thing I should have added. It's going to be a while before I put up my next video on this car. Yesterday I bought this nice new 8-foot ladder. To uh, I've got to change a fascia board on the house. It's getting to the point where it needs attention. 
It's going to have to come off, new and put on. It's going to have to be painted. That's going to take some time. I've got to get that, that done also before the hot weather hits. And, uh, of course, the house always comes first. This, the old t in here where it's safe and dry and out of the weather. But uh, that old fascia board isn't. But that's a nice ladder. They had, they, had a, they had a good deal on those, so I snapped that baby up. It's one of those, uh, it's not an extension ladder, it's, uh, I don't even know what they call them, just a V ladder, I guess. Just a, a scissor ladder, I guess. I don't know. Just a ladder. It's nice, though. It's nice and light. So, if I'm not around for, you know, a week or more, that's why. I'm working on the fascia board. I might even do a little video on it to include in the next Thunderbird video, you know, kind of show you a little bit. Because I'm trying to incorporate the mishmash videos I used to do in with the... Thunderbird kind of you know kind of give everybody a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that you know this is my channel what the heck you know I do it I do it the way I want you know how it is it's actually our channel but I I try to do it you know, the way I want because I'm the guy on the end of the camera so anyway there's our spring I'll tell you what getting that compressor out of there was more work than getting it compressed <laughs> Well, one more thing. I don't think this video is ever going to end if I don't just shut the camera off for good. But you remember the last video I told you I was going to take this rim in to Joe the welder and see if he can't build that, you know, wire brush that all down and build that little part up there with a weld and I can grind it. Well, at least one of our subscribers said, you know, just go, go get a set of wheels for a Ford. It doesn't work that way with the Thunderbird guys. The disc brakes on the front of this car require a different wheel, a deep wheel because of the disc brakes. You can't, I don't think you can even put a 1964 Thunderbird, I may be wrong on this, but I don't think a 64 Thunderbird wheel will fit on a 66 because of the disc brakes, the depth, it's a different size. I'll try to post the size of the wheel at the end of this video once I get back in the house. All right, about those wheels. Now, Brendan and I talked about this quite a while ago. We were discussing the wheels and different things. Yeah, October the 29th of last year. And he did a little research on it while I was fiddle farting around with the car. He was out. He was up there on the computer, and it says here, you know, the the dual the uh, the new dual piston disc brake for 1965 was superior in every way to the drum brakes. Blah blah blah. And it said, but one of the biggest issues is that the 15-inch wheels, which were introduced in 1964 on all T-Birds, not equipped with the wire wheel option, are not interchangeable. The steel wheels themselves are different in order to accommodate the front discs. This has led a few owners to discover they can't move their car after installing a pre-65 wheel on the front of a 66. These wheels normally work fine on the rear uh, because it's equipped with drum brakes, but they don't require the additional clearance, meaning the additional clearance of the... Uh, disc brakes okay so what I'm looking for is this size right here let me highlight this so you can see it a little better I think it's 15 by 5 this is the size of the wheels I need this is why everybody's asking so much money for them uh, this is the size of the wheels a 15 inch wheel 5 and 0.5 inches wide 5 lug spaced at 4.5 inches so I hope that answers everybody's question. We've been on top of this for many months now.